July is Nagoya's wettest month. The 7th, July's wettest day thus far. Meaning extended umbrella duty for Sumo's attendance. Takanoiwa's nephew Hokutenkai seemed set to gain attendance last winter, but has looked out of sorts since missing January as a virus close contact. Today he saw the first July win in this Division 3 bout with Tsukahara, who was beaten by Shishi on Monday. And Tenkai is still waiting for that win. Tsukahara follows through well when pulled and retains balance, then deploys a fine combination. Pushing, pulling, breaking the belt grip on the retreat, before springing back into the body headfirst from down low. One level up, we were asking who would be the man to end Abi's streak? Going into today, it stood at 17 bouts post-comeback. Could Takatoriki's son, Oho, keep it at that? No, he could not. And another sharp sideways movement took Abi to 18 not out. The Tachiai was bad, but the rest was at my tempo, Abi said. Both my weight and sumo sense are pretty much back to where they were last year. And my focus is even better. Also at this level, it was only last November that these two men contested the divisional title playoff. The brief rise in their stock appears over for now though, with Midori Fuji plagued by a hernia, and Kyokushuho oft looking lifeless on that thickly bandaged right knee. Who could rekindle happier memories today? <laughs> Emphatically, Hyokushu Hall, who shadowed the sidestep and caught his far shorter foe over the top with a strong outside left, which he then used to throw in a flamboyant movement which allays most fears over his knee. Two men left the ring with particularly painful souvenirs. First, in Division 2, walking, running and cycling wounded Akua. The back of his titanium head crashing into the edge of the step there. And in Division 1, Chiyomaru. <laughs> who came down very heavily on that right hand and was grateful the cushion saved his knee. In the title race, early frontrunner Tedono Fuji was today paired with Dai Eisho, who he has come to master after painful losses in November and January. Could he make it three in a row against the pride of Asaka? He could, but only after an incredible seesaw battle, which turned on this Cristiano Ronaldo-style step over at the rope, the right leg stepping across the resisting left to form the saving diagonal knee defence. That was a close one. Thank goodness it ended in a win, Teru panted. Not everything is going to go to plan, 
but I hope I can still win regardless and continue to pick up these points. One ringside observer had stern words for him. Not great sumo, was it? said Hakuho. Okay, he watched his opponent's movement carefully, but he can't be pulling like that. Could the Yokozuna then give him an example to follow against Takanosho? was knife edge stuff, but a better flying neck shot you will not see. This is actually a great parry from Takanosho. Left hand to elbow, right hand to neck. But as Tochi Ozan and Tamawashi and many others will tell you, although this position is unassailable against anyone else, it's actually dangerous against this genius, who can swivel round so quickly to get his overarm across. And he can do it with either one, Today, with the left. I could really move properly today, said the Yokozuna, whose sumo sense is improving by the bout. You can't move like that without real spirit. Yeah, my sumo wasn't so good, but my spirit really shone through. And if I keep picking up the wins, my performances will get even better. An interesting test awaits him tomorrow in the blubbery form of Ichi no Jo, now starting to stir after a decent winter's sleep. He moved to 3-1 and one today with this victory over Meisei, saying, My legs are getting forward well, and things seem pretty good. It's my first time in ages to top the bill against a Yokozuna, so of course, I'm looking forward. Nagoya is not just a fabulous castle city, but a fabulous port city, built upon the efforts of its fishermen as much as anything else. Its proud fishing traditions live on today in the wholesale markets of Meieki and Kanayama, but they have been scarred by changing tastes and lack of funds to replace old buildings, the most iconic of which, Chuo Suisan, closed in 2019. The neighbouring Marunaka Food Centre provided welcome shelter from today's torrential rain, and it's filled with defiant notices reading, We won't give up. We're not going anywhere. No matter how many times they're written off. Sounds familiar, right?